Uh, so good, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jason. I'm a solutions consultant with Nuzalik. And alongside here, I've got my expert for the India market, Matt Shebo. Matt has been uh, instrumental as part of our team in uh, Asia Pacific. He's been working with our customers in India specifically. Uh, he's based in Singapore, so a lot of late nights for him, uh, sometimes with a lot of the calls. But Matt's onto it, man. Like I, I've seen this guy. This guy is amazing. Like, uh, so he's here to help me today with with uh, the call and also share some of his expertise with some of the customers uh, in India and specifically what they're looking for uh, out of New Delhi as well. Yeah, Matt, would you like to say a few words? Uh, introduce yourself. Right, as well. cool. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Um, Jason's giving me all the credit. I think Jason deserves all the credit. He put the session together. So to help him out, let's make it interactive. This is really a time to come together, collaborate, use the chat. Um, maybe tell us where you're where you're stuck today. We're stuck at home. We're in a, we're in a lockdown, and I think this might be very similar for you. So which cities are you stuck in? Um, yeah, I can much? start. I'm, I can start with Singapore. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we had quite a good start, and then now things took a turn for the worse. So all in lockdown we can't there's no outside dining or anything right uh only groups of two can go out and be each other at the moment uh it was it was getting good for the past couple of months right yeah uh, so, so it's fine for a long time now, but it yeah, yeah 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 okay uh right. let me just share my screen and then we can get get into it Oh, someone stuck at home in Singapore with a cat. Interesting. Okay, let's uh let me just share my screen. Yeah, so if uh all of you have not joined the, the API based uh Jamboard link, um like the link is up above here, it's also in the chat, so just try to join that link uh if you can because it really helps if you uh participate and it uh, in the in the session because it, it's all about you right so this is you being able to input what you want to see and what i show later on will be based on what you input right so it's not like a can demo session today where i just talk about the product uh, it's it's really uh an interactive way of how we discover what you need uh for for your for your specific case so like i was uh sort of alluding to earlier right uh, today's session is not about like a product demonstration or some sales pitch or some boring tutorial about how to use the product right uh i mean if you want demonstration or, or, or those things like that like our website has all those that information right today's session is more about taking a design thinking approach to discover what you nearly need for api observability right so when we say observability, what we mean is being able to see all the the components of your 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 architecture that what goes in, what comes out, right? Having a more holistic view of what what's happening in 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 your environment. And today, obviously, it's about interacting with other participants, right? So definitely, please join the the Google Jamboard session because that's that will really help you uh, take part in this session and sort of it might be a bit like a choose your own adventure game right so as long as you keep feeding me with what what you need and what what you you uh you require and i'll i'll see what we can do to help you uh in those aspects right so yeah please challenge me uh with something like you know that that you think that is something that you really need right so so don't worry about what new relic can do or can't do uh as you can see, I didn't really even talk about like New Relic or what we are about uh, today. Like it's not about us today. Today is about you, right? So we're not not here to 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 talk about our product or features or, or things like that, right? So why why design thinking? Uh, design thinking is sort of an approach uh, that you know companies like Airbnb, Netflix, Amazon, Apple, they all use uh, similar uh concept where we sort of walk backwards from what we want right and then we find out what we need to get there and also we try to empathize with our users like try to find out like how they feel 
right? And try to see what we can do to to meet th those requirements. So it's, it's sort of like two ends that like we've got to see where we can come together and, and get things done, right? If we just simply uh, do it like, oh, I need this, I'll, I'll get this. And after that, you realize that you need something else. And then you have to go and get that. And you, you find that you're, you're not making much progress because you keep uh, asking for more and more, but it doesn't really uh, help you accomplish what you want. Right? It doesn't really impact your life. So here, my approach is to find exactly what you need. Right? So this is the design thinking approach allows me to ask questions in a certain way to find out exactly what you need, what your organization needs. Huh? And then be able to put that together in a, into a platform or a dashboard for you so that you can see what you need from an API observability perspective. And so today's design thinking session is, like I mentioned earlier, it's not about features or functions. I'm not here to talk about the product, what the product can do, you know, this is the best thing ever, or this is the cool, super cool feature. No, today is not, not really about that. Today is about like what you want to accomplish, right? What, what you want to get, what are the outcomes that we want, right? Once we know about the outcomes, then it's actually quite easy to walk back and see like, okay, what products and features we want, what do we need to get there? How much we need to do use this and that? It actually makes it a lot easier for me and, and, and you as well, right? Uh, to know what you want. If we just talk about features and functions and then like all of these tools and, and, and techniques, but what does it do? Like, you know, what's the impact to the business? Doesn't some of that doesn't make sense. So that's today is about outcomes, right? So we've got to focus about outcomes. Think about that vision that you want. Uh for your company or especially when it comes to your architecture and your APIs, right? What, what sort of outcomes do you want from, from this session? Okay, so this is some of our, like our engagement process, like how we work with a lot of our customers. We identify the pains, KPIs, OKRs. We have work, work set, workshop sessions like this. Then we start to validate the outcomes, right? Of what, what we've got. And so, for example, like one customer said that, or oh, they want to monitor VIPs and see how they are doing across the platform, how they're using the APIs. So we came up with a dashboard, like something like this, that you can see, okay, how many VIPs are affected, what are the user user sessions, all that information. Uh, we can we can put it into a dashboard. Uh, but we don't want to focus on the dashboard today. We want to focus on this thing in the middle, right? So I'm sure by now you probably know what are some of your pains, uh, what are some of the KPIs, how you've been measured on, especially when your boss calls you and say, hey, you know, why is the API not working or why is the customer complaining, right? You know what you, when you wake up, you know, maybe you VPN in or, or you SSH into your servers, like what, what you would have to look for, right? You know what are the components you look, look for because if you're in that situation, um, you want to know what, what, what you want. And that's where the workshop comes in. We, we, we discover what you want. Then we come up with the outcomes. So that's how, how we engage uh, with our customers. And that's the process we will be showcasing here today as well. Right? So in today's uh, modern environment, right, it's so much complex. Right? There's so much API services, microservices, servers, backend databases. Right? It looks like uh, uh, quite a mess right? with all the the services talking to each other, you know, some product, some components might use multiple services and they, they have to go through different paths and channels. So it can be quite complex and you don't, sometimes you don't know where to start. Like you naturally, you will start with the component that's giving you the most problem. But is that really the, the way, way to start? Like, you know, it's sometimes if you've got a back pain, right? Sometimes it's because the way you're sitting is not, not correct. Right? So if you just focus on the pain, you might have some some relief, right? Or you can take some painkillers and like, oh, it might relieve you. But that pain will come back. Like if you don't change the way you sit sit down, that pain is going to come back, right? So that's why uh, this sort of approach comes in. Is you want to take a a holistic view, like of the whole uh, picture of your architecture, of your environment, to see not just where the pain is, right? We always will divert our attention to the pain. But we don't really have invested time to look at the big picture, set something up that we can have observability right over our entire uh, APIs. Okay, so without further ado, we we'll jump to the 
dashboard session, right? So there's a link uh, up here above and also in the chat. Um, for those of you who just joined, uh, yeah, please please join the link and we'll, we'll start kick off the session in a bit. Right? Oh, okay, I can see quite a lot of people, quite a number of people have joined in as well. Uh, yep. Okay, so the first the first part, right? Uh, let's uh let's think like okay, so maybe uh it could be a government agency, right? They roll out a new COVID uh test COVID uh tracing app. So this app is everywhere like everywhere you go, you gotta scan a QR code. You know you. You enter your your details and then it, it checks in you to different places. So this helps the the whole uh, country, right? Uh, do the tracing and contact tracing together. But you are the DevOps lead or you are the manager of this app. And in the middle of the night, your boss calls you and says, "Like, hey, you know, uh, the users are not able to access. You know what what's going on?" So now now the most important is like how. How are you going to solve this problem, right? And we come to that part later on. Uh, the first part we want to understand is like, you know, especially if you're a normal user, like you can't use the app. Maybe you can't go in, right? In Singapore, like our app, if you can't use the the place together app to go in, you're not able to to check into the place, right? So your how does your users feel, right? Especially if they don't like the app, they start complaining on Twitter or or Facebook, and then it doesn't feel good, right? Especially if you, you're the one managing the app. So this is just a, a warm up exercise, uh, just to get you to use the the Jamboard. So how does your users feel like? So just if you all can can uh, log into that URL, uh, click on the sticky note, and type in like maybe I'll put in the first one, unhappy, and select a color. Maybe you can choose pink, orange. Uh, yeah, any color is fine. Doesn't have uh, there's no meaning or anything. So just select one. Maybe each one of you can put one. Yep, frustrated. You see that? Thanks. That's good. Anyone else? Yeah, this is just a warm up uh, exercise just for you to test out the, the platform and the and the features and see if it works for you. If there are any issues, uh, please let us know in the chat. Uh, if you can't log in or you can't uh, taste anything. Okay, yep, annoyed, that's a good one. Any more? I think we'll leave it for one more and then we'll, we'll move on to the next uh, session. Anyone want to add uh, one, more, one more note? The very shy audience today. Don't be yeah, shy. Yeah, yeah. Give us, very, give us one to the users. Um, I know I'm quite vocal, and when an app doesn't work, I always complain to support. Um, <laughs> the poor support team always like when I can't yeah. order food, always complain to support. <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of the Singapore culture as well. Uh, complaining, so uh, you're feeling well into to our. <laughs> If you don't know how to complain, that means you you're not not localized here in Singapore. Like, <laughs> the only thing I know how to do. I'm like this doesn't work. Oh, nice! It's perfect. Anyone else? Uh, there's only three. Oh, come on! Don't be shy, man. I, I, any more? Uh, I, I think there's, really there might be some well. some problem Sorry. with the platform. You can see people are in, but they're not mm. able. So if you can't. Okay, let's move on to the to the next part, right? So, so your boss calls you and say, hey, you know, the COVID app is not working. The users are complaining, like everything is not working. Like you ask him, like, hey, like, 
when was this happen? And it's not giving you much answers. It's just shouting at you, right? So right now, when you're in this situation, you could be the DevOps manager, you could be the product manager, you could be in any position, like it could be the help desk. Uh, so depending on whatever positions you have, uh, just think about, or in general, right? If an app is not working or an API is not working or something is not working and someone calls you up, you know, in the middle of the night uh, and say, hey, you know, you gotta, you got to fix this. What's going on? Now think about that. Just take a moment to think about that and then ask yourself, you know, what do you need to know uh, to to solve this problem, right? Right. So there's, uh, there's a lot of things that you have to know, I'm sure. So I'm sure I expect to see quite a lot of... Uh, answers right so what do you need to know uh to solve uh this api right that's not working right when you how do you fix your api so one one recent example um yeah it, 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 there was an issue with the vaccination um system in in india um okay. struggle with uh, right you book an appointment and then you get an otp to your phone and yep. the, the S api wasn't working so people didn't get their otp couldn't book the vaccination uh. So it's a great example of how when yeah. the volume suddenly goes up, it's really important that it works because otherwise, you know, if the last step of yeah, this yeah. Of your vaccination appointment doesn't work, it's it's really bad in in current times. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Like I often see that happening. Actually, it's quite a common. Like whenever some apps they implement the OTP, yeah. you go to the OTP screen and then you're like waiting. SMS has come, you, you click resend, and the SMS doesn't come. Like, and you feel like, is that something wrong with my phone? You start checking your phone, like, am I getting good reception? But there's a, there's no SMS coming, like, like what's going on? Uh, go yeah, so. It says everything's working. You're like, well, yeah. is it? <laughs> yeah, is it working? Like, is it my phone that's a problem? Okay, so if you're, yeah, if you're so, in there, there's multiple tabs. So make sure you jump into that second tab, or use the arrows on the top. And just add, yeah, add another sticky note. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll add one, and maybe Matt, you can also add one as well. Uh, so that um, maybe using your example, uh, why is the SMS OTP not working? For example, yep, that could be one of them. All right, or you or we can find out what was the user. Which part? Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, just keep keep them coming, guys. Uh, keep adding more to the to this jam board. and and we'll we'll go through all of them later after this session. Right? So just uh, like I said, just don't worry about what new relic can do or can't do. Right? Sometimes there might be something that we can't do. Like we can't do everything. Right? Maybe you can integrate it with another product or another API as well to, to bring that data in, right? To to get the whole view. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, just feel free to add as many as you want, right? Just go ahead, uh, keep adding. So what do you need to know when, when your API breaks and your app goes down? What are the first things you look at? It's going to be very challenging. I've added something. Oh, yeah. I love, I love this one. Whose fault is it? Like, yeah. This, is, yeah. this means a color. Yep. Maybe orange. That's good. You've got a very shy crowd today. What, yeah. What, what do you usually look at when you when you get when you find out about an issue, right? What are what are some of the things you need to know? So think about think about the app going down. What's the first What's the first thing that comes to mind? And how do you find out about it? <laughs> yeah. So this don't worry about like what API, what type of API or or any of those things. I right? just just think about anything that you want to know. I just put it here. 
Like for me, I think one, hmm, one thing maybe like which, which user was it? Like maybe like what? Mm. What? Who was the user? Maybe like a user ID. Right. So this could be any situation, guys. Like any situation that you encountered recently. You know what? What sort of information that you needed to to solve uh, a lot of the issues that you you face. Also, what's the impact, right? So I'll I'll, yeah. put, uh, I'll, I'll talk to it. Um, yeah. So if you look at the last day, um, and I spoke about this a bit earlier, and in my talk as well, a lot of crypto exchanges went down as soon as prices started plummeting because people were trying to log in, they were trying to sell off really quickly. And it wasn't that the entire service was broken, but it was that the lock-in service, you know, that first that first <laughs> item in that food chain of things that need to work was broken. And if, if you can't log in, you can't sell, you can't access your crypto, you know, you can't do anything on an exchange. And all the big exchanges, whether it was Binance, Coinbase, Crypto.com, they all got hit with outages yesterday. And so it's really... It's really understanding what's the impact of something happening. So if the chart for the price maybe can't be displayed, the impact probably isn't too bad. But if you can't log into the app, the impact is pretty bad because nobody can transact, nobody can, you know, buy crypto. And so the the impact on the business is bad reputation, social media outrage, you're not making any fees, right? These exchanges make money because people buy and sell, it's always the transaction cost that makes money for them. If people can't log in, you're not making any money and you're actually losing money because your reputation suffers. So what's the impact of, of the outage? How quickly do you need to be back up? Yeah, that's a that's a great one, man. Like that's so so important, right? And especially when it comes to prioritizing, right? If you get bombarded with lots of issues all the time and you're just looking at other messages or tickets. You don't really have a view of what's the impact and then how to prioritize um, accordingly, right? So, you know, like you said, if everyone can't log in, that's a big impact, right? But if one user is complaining about his graphs are not working, are you going to spend time solving that graph issue or focus on the login issue, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. You know. Okay, yeah, we can see uh, some uh, Okay, uh, let me just maybe add a few more. Uh, I'll jump in. Yeah, just go in at first time. Oh, yeah, this is good, good, good one. Uh, there you go. Maybe I can go Don't be shy, folks. You can just open the Jamboard. Jamboard. You can open it in incognito, and on the left, just click a little sticky note. Um, yeah. And let's see. You know, you've got a little mouse key, and then you've got the sticky note, and just add anything that's happened to you. you not, know, you're not blocking these. Your name won't show up. It's all very anonymous. Anonymous. <laughs> that's a tough word. <laughs> yeah. But um. Anonymous hyena. It comes out mm -hmm. anonymous hyena. Like yeah. um, what do you need to know when your app goes down? What other things do you need to know? Maybe what was the customer doing? Trying to do. Yep, how to fix it. It's a good one. And the other thing, and, and just again to that, to that crypto example, is was it expected, right? So one, yeah. one example is if you if you announce a lockdown, chances are everybody's going to go onto the news website within the first 10 minutes after the announcement, mm. 
see what are the new rules, what am I allowed to do, how much time do I have, right? Some lockdowns kicked in straight away and people had to go from wherever they are straight home. Sometimes it's two days in advance. And so there's, there's times when you know it will be challenging and so you can prepare. And then there's times when you can't prepare. Um, yeah. And it's understanding, you know, how you want to react to it. So if you know there might be an issue, you can potentially display an error that's useful to users rather than just saying 500. Um, you can say, okay, we're expecting we're expecting that we'll fail over the next day. We're sorry, bear with us. And then as a mm -hmm. user, I don't get as annoyed because I know, you know, it's probably a tough time for them as well to make sure software is working. So it's always, you know, appealing to that human aspect, right? How can you make how can you make the impact? How can you lessen the impact by thinking ahead? Right. Yep, that that's a great, great, uh, great point, man. Especially if you can anticipate there's going to be high volume. At least, like you know, inform the user to like, oh, like we expect high volume at this stage, or be a bit more more transparent with what was happening, and at least that also helps you scale your 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 APIs accordingly, right? And so. In, uh, when you have visibility of what's about to happen, at least you also know how to benchmark right? right. Uh, those those patterns and things like that. Yeah, I think uh, looks like I think we've got quite a bit a bit uh, to to get working with. Let me have a look. Okay, so who was the user? User idea okay, that's a good one. Uh, why is the SMS OTP not working for OTP apps? What was the user trying to do? How to fix it? What's the impact first time? Which part of the API is broken? What happened? What do I need to do? Whose fault was it? Is, the, is it the infrastructure? Oh, I love this one, right? This actually is, is related to the whose fault, fault is it? Like, it you, might think, you might think it's a separate question, but I think it's not related like, to whose fault is it? It's like, a nice uh, way of asking it, right? Yeah. Who needs to fix probably the better way of asking whose fault is it? Yeah. 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 Who can help? Yeah. So let me uh, jump into my screen. Because uh, like, before before we do that, like, let me see which ones we can do and which ones we can't do, right? Um, so let me put in uh, our new level. Okay, and why is SMS? We can we can do something like that. Uh, OTP. We yeah, we can do something. Uh, with the OTP. At least we can see is the o o SMS OTP not working. We can do that, right? Because when we see the the different steps, we can see that the the transactions are not completing, and then we'll be able to tell that. At least it's the SMS OTP that's not working at the start. Who was the user ID? Yep, we can do that. I'll try to cover that. What was the user trying to do? Yep. So I think instead of going through all of this, let me just show them what we can do in the platform mm -hmm. uh, based on this this information that they've given us here, right? What the our audience have, have given to us. We'll go through this and see what, what can be done and what, what can't be done uh in the platform. So let me just share another screen. Well, yeah. Yeah, so as you, you can see uh what I've got is one of the dashboards that we we have, right? So this is all customizable. This is just an example of what we can do. Right. So we can see uh things like the the funnel. So this is a purchase funnel. But we can also do it for like a booking funnel, especially when there's an OTP involved, right? So we can actually see like, okay, the app is launched. They click uh, login, they click on the maybe a book appointment. And then at the OTP step, no one is like completing, right? And because we've got that metadata uh, from, from, from the app flow, we're able to, we can set up alerts if uh, the, the conversions are not uh in line with the the, the baselines uh we can set up 
uh, dashboards to see that you know how many percentage of people that go from the OTP screen to the the confirm screen. Right? So we can do that uh, as well. So you are able to like pick up on any any of those issues, right? Uh, that are happening as they as they happen, like the the API login time, uh, the transaction types that are happening, the average login per customer, historical conversion rates. Like so, you're gonna compare like before and after. So that's really important. Like uh, device types by manufacturer. Uh, I actually yeah, let me have. Maybe drop yep. in here pretty cut you off, but I think those those are really really important points. So working with customers, what I've seen when yep. new issues pop up that we didn't anticipate, sometimes yep. we released a feature that doesn't work in some, you know, in some browsers, so especially on Android phones. The browser yep. has a lot of inconsistencies, right? And so it might work great if you're testing it in Chrome because you're using Chrome because it works really well, and then yep. somebody using Redmi browser and suddenly everything breaks. Yeah. It can be really frustrating, but if you know what is yeah. caused, you might be able to to quickly fix it. And so to to the point of whose fault is it? Where do we need to look? Well, with that yeah. funnel, you get a pretty good idea of which team might be responsible because you know how far your users are getting and where they're bumping into issues, right? And that's that's yeah. crucial to make sure that not everybody has to get up at 2 a.m. when something goes or even you know interrupt their working day when something goes wrong, but only the, the people who can actually look at it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a really good point, Matt. Uh, we can also do do funnels, right? So, like, if I, like, for example, this is an error distribution, right? I just filter, and so the dashboard just shows me all the the users that are experiencing this error, right? So, going to to your point, uh, that you raised, like, with a Xiaomi Redmi phone not working, right? We can have this over here, so you can see the device performance. Or device manufacturer. So over here, I can see Google, Samsung. It could be Xiaomi, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I can actually filter, right? Or I can go to another dashboard. So I click on that. It can bring me to like another specific dashboard just for Xiaomi. And we can go maybe do a top down of the, the different versions. You can see the, the device type that's happening. Uh, we can look at a, a much larger. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot there's a lot we can do uh over here. Right? So, yeah, so this is like the device types, right? You can go Android, iPhone, Blueberry, Blackberry, who uses Blackberry? Uh, no idea. But anyway, look, you can see the, the different com components uh over here, right? You can see like all the different uh, architecture types. You can even go down to the to the version, right? So sell me Redmi 4 or Redmi 5. We can see what versions of those devices. Maybe it's a specific new device that are having issues. Uh, we can do a lot of that as well. I want to show uh, just to be in line with what what our our audience has selected. Right? Uh, what was the user trying to do? Uh, how to fix it? What's the impact? Which part of the API is broken? Who was the user ID? So let's focus on on those few items that that we've got. And and let's see what we've got. Right? So over here, uh, I've got some examples here, but I can show you uh, what we can do is we can actually look at any of these and go edit. And I can just say go select. Our mobile. And all the, the metadata that we are collecting, right? So for Android, it's just a SDK that you put into like a jar file. And for iOS, it's like a Coco port that is added in. And so it's very easy to add this SDK into your mobile app. And we can see what the mobile device is doing, especially when it makes the request to your backend APIs, right? So you, you are able to see from the end user perspective uh, what the, the user is doing as well. Right, so over here I can I can look at the device type, the 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 time time is loading, the sessions, the the OS version, right? I can see the device the type again, pixel, Google. So I can easily then filter, right? So you can just go select maybe 
account. So our mobile. Right, so these are all maybe where device type equal maybe pick pixel. Like see it, it's so quite friendly, like auto complete for me. So I can then I can then filter by by device type, for example. Right. So this is gives us a lot of uh data on the on the mobile side. Right, and we can always save this to the dashboard and and uh and go from there. So over here, uh, we can see that there are, there are some some dashboards as well. So over here, we can go. I'll uh, show you how how we can get to this as well. So we've got a data explorer, so you can just click query your data and go data explorer, and I can just go. Maybe mobile request error group by so you can even go by city uh carrier ASN. So ASN is the ISP. So you can see what your yeah, ISPs are going, which country, like even within India, like the different cities, we can we can zero in on them. What devices, the error type, the country code, uh ASN owner is the ISP. So we have lots of different uh, ways that we can like sort of triage the data, right? Um, so with with mobile, we can we can see this group by app name, city, device, group by name. You can see the different uh, pages of the screen, right? That the users are are going to where they are at. I think the point I'm I'm trying to show is that the data is all inside uh our platform right so i can see things like session id you can even set a username right if you want uh it could be a, a unique user id that you can set so you can even see the which user is affected by the api in the back end right so if we go back to our mini dashboard over here i can see there are 36 users facing errors I can see like the user IDs, right? You can see like, hey, look, this user has 577 errors, right? I can actually click on this filter and it shows me all that, that uh, error messages just from that user, right? So imagine if just one user calls you up and say, hey, it's not working for me. Like your help desk team with this uh, capability, they're able to see from the mobile right where the users are what the user id is but also on the back end right because we've got the the application you can see the the apis they are requesting in the back end as well right so i think this answers quite a lot of the, the questions that our audience face right uh who was the user what was the user trying to do that is based on the on the api as well um which part of the api is broken yep over there we have we have shown that what do i need to do whose fault is it to come to that uh is it infrastructure or the app i think we'll, we'll sort of cover that and how to fix it yeah we can get into that uh yeah so moving on like as you can see uh the data that we have like we can sort of tailor the dashboards to what we want them to see what you want to see right moving on to some of the questions that was asked uh with the what was the user trying to do so in our mobile uh, platform, we are able to, to do that, right? So we're able to go into, into the mobile version of our platform. We're able to go in and see what are the interactions that are happening, right? So what are the users trying to do? What, what are they trying to book a appointment or, or do something nowhere? And then where is it slow or fast? What the OS, what version, right? And obviously we can look at if there's a crash or an exception, like a handle exception, we're able to look at the data coming from that, right? So if we look at uh, some of the data that we have, we've got, uh, we can see the, the locations as well. 
Uh, maybe this version has no. All versions. Ah, okay, we've got some clashes here. So you can click on that, you can see, like, okay, I can see a clash that was happening and then two users are affected. Right, so going back to Matt, like when you say what was the impact, so you can see that a lot of users are affected, you know that the impact is higher, right? You can see the count, the, the app version, uh, the exception, and then when was this first uh, occurred, right? When did it first, I think that was one of the questions that our audience gave us, and then the last recorded. So I can click on this, uh, and it shows me how often the, the clash is occurring. I can filter by device type. So at least we know, like, back to your point, Matt, like, is it only a uh, Xiaomi Redmi 5 that is causing the issue or iPhone or, or Samsung or all the devices, right? And then we can go down, we can see what the clash was happening, uh, what where the clashes are happening. I can see the, the location, the path in the, the part in the Java file, right, down to the code level. And over here, we can set custom attributes. So we can actually set the user ID. Uh, let me just divert to custom attributes, right? So with the our SDKs, you can easily set custom attributes. So be it on the mobile or on a Java application, you just set a custom attribute using a, a command like this, like in the code. And this lets you set the, the user ID or any parameter that you want to set. Now, what that does is whenever there's a transaction or an error message, you actually have that information, right? So when I go back to here, um, sorry, here, in the custom attributes, I can actually have a user ID, right? Uh, stated over here. So we know that the user ID was facing a, an issue. So you can see the ISP, what type of uh, device type, connection type that they were using as well. And the city, uh, the different cities in India, uh, the, the countries, if you are global, you can see all of that, that information, right? And plus a lot of additional attributes, right? And over here, we can see the stack trace, right? And we can also see the event trail. So, Jason, I'm just right? going to really quickly. Can you hit command plus? Yeah. Um, because it is um, apparently we can take the screen share full screen on these workshops. So, if you can just blow it up, oh, a little, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, you, can, you can maybe go back. Well, yep, that. Well, one one down, yep, that's good. So we still see everything just a little bit bigger, maybe. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Like we, yeah, just when we go into the detail now, I think uh, being able to read that text again is, is important. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Stage can go full screen, but these workshops unfortunately cannot. Yeah, yeah. So with, with this, like you can see, uh, so this we can see here with the event trail, right? The crash happened uh, at this stage, but it also tells you like what the user was doing before the crash. So you can see that, oh, the user launched the app. And then they click on this screen and how long it was taking. They click on another screen. And then the backend, like you made the backend request to that API. And you can see the API, what version of the API. And you can see some request parameters as well, right? And uh, if you can see here, there's actually a trace ID, right? So this actually helps us to stitch together this specific request to the backend, right? So we are able to see based on the request that is going to the backend. If you've got our agent in your backend as well, you can actually see the, the whole journey, right? The end to end journey of that, that user uh, and how those requests are, are going to the backend. And you can see here uh, as another request, you clicked on another part of the screen, makes a few requests. You can see that 600 milliseconds is a bit slow, right? But well, let's see. Or oh, they put the app in the background, brings up the screen again, and bam, crash. Right, so you, at least you can see what the user was doing, and you can at least try to reproduce. Right, and you can also save additional attributes if they are not captured here. Like maybe like which part of the product or what user ID, uh, that they were doing. As you can see here, it, it captures the user's actions as well, right? Like what what they were doing. Um. So it's also grouping together the different types of uh, crashes, right? And you can see that there's one or two occurrence. So you can click next. I can actually see another user that have the same uh, issue, right? And you click around. There was some back and forth uh, 
request the responses with the APIs. We set the app to the background mode. And oh, he had encountered the crash. Right. So these these are some of the things that uh I think our audience wanted, right, man. And so we are able to do uh this this as well, right? Uh, and so just maybe because they like the crests are really crucial when you're looking at this as a repeat issue as it coming, you know, happening yeah. one and the I actually had a customer um come to me two weeks ago. They're a food delivery app in, in India and their issue was that when yeah, you know, the, the the request times out uh, the first time around and doesn't get a response back to the app quickly enough. The app will initiate a second request, but if the request oh. has been processed server side, it's just the response that went missing. It would return nothing at all. The API would just not send a response, and so then the app would crash. And so, you know, oh. with these wow. crashes, it's it's not just building a clean app, building a really stable app, but making sure yeah. that you anticipate the logic of your API, right? So in this yeah. case, they anticipate to get an empty response from, from the API. They were really good at catching any errors, whether it's a faulty response or an error code from the API. But the one thing they didn't anticipate was getting just an empty response. And so that didn't happen until volumes went up, servers were starting to struggle. And then it's really uh, of having, you know, the backend team and the app team work together to make sure it's a smooth experience. Yeah. If you're ordering food, um, I get really impatient. I'm like, bring it here now, please make it fast. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm not happy when the app crashes when I'm ordering food. Um, but to that point, yeah, I you yeah, that's longer, um, we actually, I mean, generally speaking, it's it's really crucial to understand your your requests that are coming to the APIs and that are coming from the APIs. And it's always twofold, right? It's understanding if your APIs are up, but if they're up. Can your apps handle the response? And I guess that's the that's that's how we're linking, you know, APIs to this section of of mobile applications to make sure yeah. they're part of the content. Yeah, that that's a really good important point, right? Like, especially when there's something in the front end that you don't know what's going on. Maybe you just see just having a look at the back end is not good enough. You gotta have that full picture of the front end and the back end, right? Um yeah, so if we some of uh just to sort of summarize a lot of what we do, like I think I'll just show uh, in the service. So this is, this gives you, uh, so this is what essentially we are doing, right? We are able to put our agents into the front end, the back end, the different services, the APIs, and we're able to capture all those uh, information, right? And if there's some uh, issues or alert, we're able to look at that. And see like hey what's going on uh in those in those in those components right mm -hmm. yeah uh, another good thing uh i wanted to touch on is like when that when when an alert happens like what what do you need to do right so over here i can see like all the alerts are, are coming in uh sometimes you get too many alerts you don't know what's going on right so this helps you sort of organize by what's critical not critical uh, we can look at incidents as well. So like uh any event that, that any incident that occurred will be will be tagged here. And here we can see like what was happening uh when when that specific issue occurred. Like we can look at all incidents over here. You can see the different the incidents that are happening. And you can see like who who needs to be alerted and who needs to be acknowledged uh for those incidents. Um, going back to the overview page, uh, events page, where you can see all the events that are happening as well. Uh, you can see uh, what those events you can speak on the details. And it shows you uh, what was happening in the event, right? And one of the things that you can do as well with uh, incidents and events is you can set up notifications, right? And you can also have like a note over here. I can add a link to here, where you can go in and say like, oh, if this issue happens uh, quite often, you can click on the run book. The run book is basically like set up instructions and steps to take, right? To, to troubleshoot the issue. So they don't have, your boss doesn't even need to call you up uh, in the middle of the night. Like if your help desk team or the people supporting the, the application know what to do, 
they can actually take control of the of the of the situation, right? They can do do what they need to do uh, in the back end. Yep. Any any questions, guys? I know you've been a really quiet group today, um, but we've got a, we've got a couple of minutes left. So if there's any questions around what you've seen, any questions you had and how to make sure you can make sure this doesn't happen to you, you can fix your APIs really quickly, put them in the, into the chat and we're happy to pick them up to make sure that you get you get the most value out of today as well. Just jumping in here really quickly because I had a quick look at the time, Jason, I realized we might need to... Oh, we might need to over, over time. I think... No, no, uh, no time but it's just very it would be good to see if anybody wants to raise a question yeah and yeah. put them into the chat yep quite true okay back to you back to you sorry to interrupt your your workflow there yeah yeah no worries so yeah this was something i also wanted to show right so you can see the issues and activity the issues that are coming in as you can see here we are correlating multiple incidents so like back to, to your example, Matt, like when you said that the user clicked the, the button a few times, that might have triggered a, a response, plus the backend had a few uh, error messages. So we, we are able to correlate that, right? Because there's a trace ID uh, that's linking both the, the front end and the backend, right? And we're sending that through. So we're able to correlate those incidents together. And if I click on that, I'm able to see the correlation of those incidents. Right, so maybe the, the the analysis is like, oh, there's some latency or some error in the backend application, right? What the impacted services, uh, what so which part of the API is not working, right? So this is classified under services, and we can see here, you no, know, was there any deployments that were happening, right? Maybe someone released a new version, or was there any patterns? So this uh root cause analysis, uh, suggested root cause analysis, basically. It's automatically automatically populated like right, based on the trends uh that had that it saw when the issue occurred. Right? So you saw that oh there's a spike in error logs. And in the billing service there was a there was lots of errors by by this specific uh content content length with, with this specific uh header. And so it's able to do some uh, analysis. Uh, we can see deeper like how it's analyzing and, and you can see the the distribution of attribute change when the issue started. So there's probably like thousands of metrics, right, that we are collecting. But based on our AI and ML uh, pattern recognition, right, we're able to detect these types of issues uh, that could be happening. Right? And it helps you solve the, the issue at, at hand. Like you can see, oh, this was the first incident. And then the other thing that affected this service. And this other, this thing got resolved. And this, this thing became uh, another error on another service, right? And you can see the different, uh, the different uh, incidents and how we've able we've been able to correlate all these incidents together, right, into one screen, like right? with the and this happens automatically out of the box, right? It uh, it learns as well. So over here, if you think that this correlation is not correct, you can put a thumbs down. If it's correct, you can times thumbs up. What that does is actually trains our machine learning API to help you. Right? So this will, you will have your own separate like ML uh, pattern database on our platform, and you can train the the machine learning API, give feedback as well, right, to the machine learning API. Um, so it's able to more correctly uh, identify those issues as well. Um, and on top of that, like we're able to detect any just any strange anomalies, right? Like if there's a suddenly there's a spike in the number of errors in the API, or uh, some, or maybe like for that example you gave, man, like people are not converting on the on the mobile app because the OTP was not working, right? So you can see that suddenly the the transactions for the confirm page went down, right? So this will automatically detect those anomalies. Uh, so you don't have to keep setting alerts for every single thing. Like this happens like really out of the box, right? The error rate was much different than normal. It's using the AI ML to to detect these types of things and what what other signals it's looking at. Uh, any questions before I sort of summarize uh, 
the session for for today. I think if you're looking back at the at our Jamboard session, right, let's see if we've covered everything uh, that our participants uh, gave us today. Which part of the API is broken? Yep, I think we did that, right? We showed that. What happened? I think we showed that with the, especially with the mobile, the steps, right? The user was doing before. Whose fault was it? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think we we actually know whose fault was it. We're not, not gonna. <laughs> uh, you can actually tag uh, a username uh, to each service so you know who's in charge of what service. So the other thing can also send out to those services. You can know who to call at 2 a.m., right? But we're not gonna, we're not, we're not gonna say that we're gonna do that, like, you know, sometimes. <laughs> Uh, what do I need to do? Yep, with the run book, you're able to to populate that 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 as well. The first time you know, I covered this in the mobile app, right? Uh, what was the impact? Yep, you can see like how many users are affected, right? Based on the different uh, questions. How to fix it? I don't think we've covered this uh a little bit. I would say half with the run book, but sometimes it might be a new issue that you've not encountered before. Or you've not put the run book. But so we can show you what was, yep. right? so he, he didn't do the first steps. He didn't do a full root cause analysis, but he showed that yeah. we get info stack traces. Yeah, it's a good starting yeah. point. Well, yeah, that's a good. At least you know what you need to fix, but the the how the steps. Like, I think that might you might have to uh, to have a little bit more, but at least it does give you so much more information, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like we can do like claim my success maybe for this one a bit half. Whose fault was it? I don't think we, we can do that. Like we're not gonna assign blame, but we can put names to, to which APIs, right? But I don't think we want to point fingers. Um, it could be someone else's fault that caused this API not to work. Right? So that's why the new relic, you gotta come together as a team behind one interface, right? So the mobile team is not good enough for them to just use the tool like uh cash analytics or some other uh mobile front end or the back end team users like another tool right you gotta sort of come together on a single platform and a single tool and then you can immediately when your boss calls you you know what you have to do yeah you have all the information you need uh, let me see yeah just just let me summarize up uh the are you looking at, are you able to see my uh, presentation? I think I'm good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are some of the effective outcomes, right, that we will work with you to get. So based on the your different use case, your API scenarios, what type of uh, situations you have, we can bring out the, the dashboards that you need to see. It could be a different dashboard for different teams. But it's best if you have one good dashboard for all the teams to come behind. So I wouldn't say they know whose fault is it, but they know what to do to work together to fix the, the issues, right? It's all about working together, not about blaming each other. Uh, so yeah, what is API observability, right? So instead of monitoring where it's something's wrong, oh, let's monitor that, or something else is not wrong, not working, let me add on to that, maybe write some scripts to, to check this and that. Observability is about having all the data in one place, proactive, and basically trying to get data from everywhere, right? Like we're not going to be in a situation where your boss calls you and say, oh, sorry, boss, I didn't monitor this uh, this API. I didn't think it was going to fail. Right? You don't want to be in that situation. So observability is basically having a more holistic approach, looking at it from a top view, right? What do I really need? What needs, what is important? And we're collecting all that information where we are proactive, predictive, and it's all driven by data in the in the platform. And yeah, so let us know how you like the workshop. I think that will come to the end of the workshop. Matt, do you have any uh, parting remarks for for the, the group here, man? I'd say um, keep the keep the conversation open. Reach out to us, right? Um, I know a lot of these projects are really personal, maybe. You know, this is too big of a setting to change to ask your question, but we're we're available. So make sure you take down Jason's email address on the screen. Um, mine, you can get mine on slides as well, and then you know start the conversation because it's a really exciting time 
to, to be working in APIs and making sure they're up and running. Um, and yeah, we'd love to we'd love to hear your experience more and get into get into the detail. And if you need any help, we're here. You might have jumped onto mute because I can see you talk, but I can't hear you. So I'm just gonna call you out on that quickly. Yeah, I was just saying I I put your email in the chat as well. So don't <laughs> don't get surprised if you get bombarded by the quest. That's uh, all good. Uh, yeah, good. so they can contact you as well. You're the expert, <laughs> especially for the, the Indian market. Uh, awesome. Well, yep. uh, have an awesome day ahead. Thank you for spending some time with us today. And I hope to meet all of you in person soon on the other end of this of this madness that we're all kind of, kind of going through right now. Um, so stay safe. <laughs> yes, thanks, man. Although it seems far away, I'm still looking forward to it, like where we can... Uh, meet all of you face to face maybe do this at an actual so presentation or conference oh, i haven't been to one in a while like an actual yeah. conference <laughs> yeah yep thank you guys uh, have a have a great day and have enjoy the rest of your day bye bye